What's up, gun people? Mr. F and H, back at it again. I know it's been a little bit, but uh, I'm looking to get back into the swing of things and maybe make a few videos for your enjoyment. This time I'm bringing to you an AMD 63 that I recently converted from an AMD 65 that I had laying around that really wasn't any count. Looks like the gun runs about 100% right now, as far as I can tell. But uh, it's one sick build. This is kind of a com block mixed with new school. So uh, speaking of super sick com block rifles, this uh, originally was a Hungarian 65, but due to the fact that it was a side folder wire stock, I just never could get uh, decent accuracy out of it or any kind of like repeatability as far as my, uh, I would call it a cheek weld, but it was more of a chin weld. So I ended up deciding to convert it into a um, AMD 63 when I did some repairs to it recently. The, um, the original build didn't go so well. Uh, I used uh, an 80% receiver flat. And although it was an interesting process, I probably wouldn't do it again. Uh, ultimately, I fucked up something horribly uh, during the build, and my rifle just never really was re reliable. Now, I, I would take the full you know, brunt of the uh, blame for that because I'm sure as a first-time builder, there are some things I probably did that you shouldn't have. Uh, I was lucky to have, uh, I don't want to say like an expert level builder, but uh, definitely somebody very knowledgeable, and uh, I trust them very much. And, um, you know, I can't, can't uh, say how much I appreciate their help uh, looking over my shoulder during the build. And so I was lucky enough to have that same friend looking over my shoulder again uh, when I re went to rebuild it this time. Uh, uh, this time I used a Childers 80% receiver. Uh, the rails were already welded in place. It's already heat treated. Uh, there's a few things you have to do to complete it, such as, um, maybe drilling your trigger pins. Uh, let's see, you got to drill out, uh, another spot for the safety notch selector. seems like I may have had to drill out the, uh, rivet holes for the front and rear trunnion, I believe. Uh, like I said, there was a little bit of work involved, but overall it, it was, it was a pretty pleasant experience compared to dealing with a receiver flat that you're, you know, you're responsible for bending it and welding it and heat treating. I mean, there's, the, with a receiver flat, it seems like there was almost infinite amounts more work compared to getting the shoulders 80% receiver, which by and large, most of this work is already done professionally for you, which uh, I'm, I'm almost confident something in that first receiver up until that point We'll say I just completely screwed the pooch on that one. But anyways, I digress. So with the Childers 80%, uh, it just seemed like this rifle flew together. Like it just basically begged to get slapped back together. Uh, as you can see in the, uh, you know, all this footage, it, it seems like the rifle runs very reliably now. Whereas before, I couldn't seem to make it through a magazine. I mean, I could, it seemed like to make it five rounds, I needed to change the magazine twice. You know, um... Yeah, and I think I'll I'll go ahead and inset some footage if I can find it. Some uh, some really old range footage I have when this used to be an AMD 65, and you can see what I mean. It's just like really sad. So here's some old footage when this was an AMD 65. Uh, this was a training class I'd taken uh, back in like 2016 with regular guy training. As you can see, uh, I had quite a few malfunctions during the class. I still enjoyed the class, and uh, I'm definitely a lot more proficient in um, clearing a malfunction to this day. But uh, as you can see, the AMD just it never did seem to run reliably, hence the uh, entire reason for the rebuild. And, um, you know, so at this point, I, I really couldn't be happier with the rebuild. I don't have a shitload of rounds through the gun, but uh, definitely enough that... I'm, I'm getting a pretty good feeling about reliability here. Uh, some of this old fit footage, I feel like I could have inset some old Benny Hill music to this just to show how ridiculous it was the amount of reloading needed, uh, you know, just to fire off a few shots. So uh, here's another course of fire uh, with the uh, regular guy training. Uh, like I said, this was a terrific class. We did uh, a lot of close-up, a lot of far. Uh, seems like we did... You know, one, 200, 300 yard shooting. I think this is uh, 25 yards and in. It looks like about this point I'm at 
I don't know, maybe three to five yards. Uh, it was it was a pretty good class. It was a lot of one on one personal instruction, uh, as well as a lot of um, uh, lecture, you know, listening. So um, really picked up quite a bit of knowledge. Uh, I thought I was a lot better shooter than I was, and then once I got to the class, I realized I was rather mediocre. Wah, wah, wah. But uh, we can always grow, so I don't know. Um, you can't really see too much from the footage of this, but it definitely seemed like it was just a constant heartache with this rifle trying to get it to run right. You can see I just threw a mag down, so that was another mag dump right there. Or, excuse me, another malfunction right there. I don't know that I ever got a full mag through this rifle when it was an AMD 65. And we got the gun running again, just in time to finish the drill. I think at this point in time, I just had like a Chinese knockoff rail of some kind up front. I may put that on eventually again, but um, I just recently modified a uh, Magpul MOE handguard uh, with the M-lock slots on it so that I could get one of those vertical grips on it, like the actual current production, not this... Uh, <laughs> Old school com block, weird pistol grip that's like reversed, and I don't know. Actually, in this in this footage, you can see it's it's a pretty decent, um, pretty decent looking gun at this point. But the reliability has just ultimately screwed the shit out of this gun. But I I can't say enough about how how cool and just uh, battlefield pickup this rifle looked at this point during the build. And it looks like right now I'm actually getting a decent string of fire. And then all of a sudden just something happens. Right about here. You can see it's just malfunction again. Hmm, two shots in and already a malfunction, but... Seems to run a lot better now. Um... And I gotta say, I do kind of dig the uh, configuration that it's in now with the uh, the old school stock on it. Um, you know, with the AMD original handguard up front. But of course, I think it's super freaking hot, super quick, which is why, like I said, I, I went ahead and modified an, uh, a Magpul handguard to work on this. So eventually, I'll get some video up on that to show you guys what that looks like now. The new hand grip on it. Um, I mean, with the flash suppressor on there. It, you can see right now I'm talking about the muzzle recoil of it. I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Like, this thing's rocking off into space. But uh, it seems to kick, like, straight back, as you can see in the footage. It's actually kind of crazy recoil. But, I don't know, right now in the footage, it's, it's got one of those recoil buffers in it. I don't know if that's affecting the recoil. Uh, that's supposed to soften the recoil, but from the footage, it, it really didn't appear to be doing that. Uh I'm really not certain, so I went ahead and took that out. We'll see if that makes a difference next time I shoot. Uh, I've got a uh, AMD sling on it, uh, original surplus sling. That was pretty cool. It was like a new old uh, stock. So I went ahead and like oiled the shit out of that to make it look super, uh, super used. <laughs> it actually looks pretty cool, like it matches the rifle now. Uh, so overall, I'm I'm fairly pleased with this. It was it was a pretty enjoyable experience, to be honest. Uh, you know, uh, who would have thought building an AK would have actually turned out cool? But like I said, it's a lot a lot of work. You're you're cutting apart your parts kit that's been demilled, so a lot of drilling out old rivets and uh, that kind of thing. But uh, the overall experience was actually really enjoyable. A lot a lot of long nights hanging out with a buddy and. Um, you know, just proceeding to build this thing. And so the rebuild, it really couldn't have gone any smoother. Uh, all the rivets look good. Um, you know, the trigger functions well, everything. The, the only thing that was a little bit off was the rear trunnion for some reason. Got just a little bit out of whack when I was installing that. And luckily, uh, the stock that's on it, my buddy had just laying around. And it, it was... Uh, but uh, new production stock, uh, Polish WBP, hell, had never been in, uh, installed or drilled out or anything. And so as a result, I couldn't have gotten any luckier because 
I was the first person to drill that stock, so it basically fit my rifle perfectly, even with a little bit of an offset on my, my rear trunnion there. But um, let's see, I think I got one more video coming up after this. So I think at this point in the uh, video, I'm shooting at 100 yards. Um, I've just been shooting wolf throughout the entire video. Uh, I'm trying to think. I've got a, a mixture of, I believe these were Polish steel mags and then Magpul mags. And it uh, seemed like it, it functioned flawlessly up until now. So uh, just going over a list of uh, the parts that make up this rifle. Uh, like I said, it's got a WVP uh, stock. It's got a hogue grip on it. Um, the silencer co-flash suppressor up front. It's got a CNC warrior uh, thread adapter. All that's been pinned and welded together to bring it up to uh, 16 inches. That's uh, 14 and a half inch. I believe it's the nitride barrel from uh, ak-builder.com. Pretty rigid barrel. I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, the accuracy of that so far. Uh, let's see, like I said, I think that's a Polish mag that's uh, sitting in it right now. And, of course, it's got uh, all Hungarian uh, forged parts in it. So that's pretty sweet. You know, basically everything on it is an original Hungarian machine gun part, uh, aside from the barrel and the trigger pack, of course. Trigger pack that I'm using it right now is just a Palmetto State Armory AK trigger. Um... And I think the safety selector as well may have been off of one of my Palmetto State Armory AKs. Uh, kind of robbed from, robbed from Peter uh, to pay Paul a little bit on this rifle. But um, well, I'll say it again. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm pretty damn pleased with this rifle and how it's gone together. And just the overall look of it, the experience of it. I look forward to building another AK. Uh, as soon as I can get my hands on another part kit, I'm going to be begging my buddy to let me come over and use his tools. Um, you know, just spend some company or excuse me, spend some time with them. It was just really enjoyable build just fucking around in my buddy's garage building this thing. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys have any comments or uh, questions, concerns about my build. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.